Xfinity Sports welcomes you to Franklin High School in Seattle, Washington for the quarterfinal round of the Tournament of Champions Holiday Classic. And it's the host team playing the Franklin Quakers against the Clover Park Warriors. 3A versus 2A, the best in Washington High School basketball. How you doing and happy holidays. Bob Akami and Dave Harshman along with you. One of four games we've seen today in this tournament in the quarterfinals, and of course the first day of the tournament is when everybody has their energy up. Franklin eager to get into the Metro League battles with Rainier Beach, and Clover Park trying to recapture their glory from two years ago that won a state championship. Well, they're minus a, a pretty good piece of that, but David Crisp is a kid that can really carry you a long way. They've got athletes. Uh, I think they're still trying to learn how to play with each other, to be quite frankly about it, but you know, Mel Ninnis has been there quite some time, and you know, you see David Chris right there. He could light it up. He could get 30 tonight he could, or more. Well, he averages 25 points a game. And, yes, right now with a younger team, with a key player out of action in uh, Jordan Horst and uh, another player just coming back, and that is Xavier Means who won't start tonight. Glover Park's got some work to do, but it's a chance to test themselves against good competition. And that's what the Franklin Quakers are. Very deep. And uh, as they battle with Rainier Beach, probably both of those teams are going to come out of the Metro League and advance to the final eight. Well, Jason always downplays his team. I mean, they're very good, and they're, and, and they're really tough to beat in their home court, as we know. But this is the kind of thing where, where uh, Clover Park can come in here and feel, hey, whether we win or lose, if we just go out and play, we'll learn something more about our team. Franklin will also learn something because I think this will get them ready for the battles in the Metro League. Patrick Ball, probably the most balanced player on Franklin's team. 16 points, five boards, two steals for the senior, and he shoots 53% from the field. Uh, Franklin loves to press, run, and attack, and Ball's a guy who knows how to finish at the rim. Well, and, and exactly, and, and the thing is, because of the way they play, so uh, Clover Park's going to go with four-guard lineup tonight, see what they can do. Well, let's meet those starting lineups, and we'll start with the Clover Park Warriors, who will play four guards, David Crisp, as we mentioned, six-one junior, Philip Winston, the latest in the Winston par family parade, uh, will be a 6'2 junior, Travis Parker, the transfer from Lakes, 5'10 sophomore, and then you're going to see uh, a senior, also a newcomer from the state of Florida, Mike Hill and Glenn Jordan, the 5'10 freshman, uh, who has proven to be a rather heady young man running this offense. Xavier Means will be coming off the bench, still coming back from a surgery in his hand. Played one game uh, after coming back against Sumner, put up a double-double. Seems to be okay, but three games and three nights now, you're going to limit his minutes. And, of course, Clover Park is coached by Mel Ninnis in his 19th year as head coach, 29th coach year on the staff at Clover Park. Franklin Quakers, tons of talent, nine deep tonight, and you can't miss their shoes. You can see them from space. <laughs> Errol Hennings, 13 points, 4 assists. Patrick Ball, you heard his numbers, the 6'5 senior. Keith Smith, 9 points a game. Great vision for the 6'4 freshman who has won the trust of his coach already. Manny Siale, the 6'6 sophomore, had a huge summer. Good early season practice. He's earned some minutes, not scoring a lot of points, but strong and active on defense. And Kevin Grigsby, 6 points, 3 assists for the diminutive 5'9 senior guard. Coach of the Quakers in his fifth year is Jason Kerr. Proud to maintain the tradition here of the great athletes and coaches and Trent Johnson, Peyton Siva, Jesse not bad. That guy up there, uh, yeah. Jason, Jason Terry, Terry, was a decent player. Jason Terry, not bad. <laughs> you know, I think what they did with the shoes, he said, look, it, we're going to get something, so if, it, if we get in the fog, we won't lose you there guys. There you go. <laughs> Franklin, the home team in the white, trimmed in dark green and black. Clover Park in their traveling green. There's some of the great names. Ron Santo for us older folks. Oh, yeah. Great baseball name for well, the Fred 70s Fred Hutchinson, for the Cubs. and no, I didn't see him play. <laughs> but your dad did. <laughs> yes, he did. <laughs> and there are those neon shoes. The neon's big this year. No it sad. is. I'm yeah. All over. I mean, uh, the Seahawks, best neon accent ever. Yep. And I don't like neon, but I like those uniforms. I saw, you'll, you'll hate this, I saw a neon car today, a Dodge Charger neon yeah. with neon rims, and the whole car was neon green. Nice. Well, that'll get their attention. So we stand in the middle for the jump. Uh, this is a game obviously favors Franklin, a little more experience, more depth, and their press and run is very hard to stop. But a great test for Clover Park, and this is how Mel Ninnis is approaching this game. 
The uh, SPSL 2A is not the most competitive league. Uh, Clover Park has already lost to White River, which is probably the favorite this year, but this Clover Park team will be a lot better in February oh, than it is right now. No question. Franklin goes to the outside shot first. Philip Winston, of course, brother Dre, off to a good start down at Portland State. We saw him play a couple weeks ago. Around the turn, there's ball. And that's how explosive ball is if he walks. That's why that move is so You quick. know, they well, <laughs> they've called traveling a lot tonight that I, if I was over where Mel is, I, or anybody else coaching over there, I'd kind of question it because it doesn't look like they're traveling to me. But, you know, I'm sitting over here. Clover Park and Massette, Travis Parker. Winston. And here's Chris. You put it in his hands. He will put it up and he will score. Yep. With the left hand. Been watching him since he was a seventh grader. And Clover Parks has had this run of guards. And the big difference is they've had pairs of guards the last two years, the championship team last year. Now they've got other guards, but they're not used to playing with David. So a big learning process right now. David's got, gotten a little bigger, a little stronger. You can get that shot off easier. So one of the things to watch for, I think, is the combinations. I mean, here's Clover Park starting with four guards. And you saw Parker get checked there by Smith. Crisp got his hand on it, forces the turnover. Warriors come the other way. Jordan, Crisp on the curl, all the way, changes hands, scores. There's the strength factor right there. Did a lot of that after he left the ground. Now he has the steal, poke check, and the foul will be called against Grigsby. Well, and that's why Crisp is value. He'll make you defend him. He'll make you foul him. Oh, yeah. He's a scorer. You know, I think in, in college he's got to be a point guard, but he's a, he's a scoring point guard. He handles the ball well. He's a good passer. The one thing I think that David has got to concentrate on if he wants, you know, to, to be a Division One player really is on the defensive end of the floor. Not that he can't play it. Miss layup, battle for the boards. There's Ball with a nice putback. Do you see Ball's activeness around the hoop? And it's 4-2, Clover Park early. Another float to the hoop, and that's a foul, and free throws coming. So you Clover, got Clover Park's attacked the basket well. Yes, they have. Well, they spread it. You know, they're basically playing five-man open post and just moving and, and putting the ball on the floor and passing and cutting. But all you got to do is know that there's a Winston look, at, look for number 11 because I think you <laughs> have to be uh, where a number 11 if you're a Winston. Yeah, they're going to have to retire that number when they run out of Winston's because that's got a lot of good use. Free throw's good for Phillip. If you look at Mel Menace. You know, just just off the start in the first couple of minutes here, you know, Clover Park is not phased at all by having to come in here and play no. at Franklin. Well, I think I think they see this as the challenge, you know. This is no question. You want to beat Franklin, you want to beat Beach, you want to beat Garfield, you want to beat Boffle if you get a chance. Another turnover. I don't think, I think Franklin maybe is forcing some passers or at least not playing with that urgency. They'll just push the ball. Clover Park's getting in the passing lanes. No need for the passing lane there, although met at the rim. Hennings can't get it done. I'm surprised David Smith. didn't take the ball all the way Bango. to the <laughs> Winston. Winston's got four. 8-2, Clover Park. Yeah, Franklin just needs to settle down right now. There's an and one for Hennings. Well, you're Mike Hill right there. You're five, you're, excuse me, you're six, seven, and Hennings is five, nine. Go up and swat the ball. You don't, don't let the little guy come in there. Not, not a bad play vertically, really, yeah. by him. However, don't let him get the shot off. Mannings, 13 points, four assists. He throws in and out. The lead's cut in half. Three minutes in. Well, this is what's great about tournaments like this at this time of year. You've played now seven, eight games. Crisp misses. 
After adjusting in the air. Yeah, he Henning's every bit as quick as David Chris, but David is bigger and stronger, so he can get the shot off. Now, let's see, did he get ball pushing off? Or was he fouled? He was fouled. Foul is on Crisp, his first, first Clover Park sub of the game. Here's Xavier Means coming in for Hill. So Means with a heavily wrapped hand, hand and, uh, you know, wrist. Just played against Sumner his first game. I'm going to limit his minutes a little bit in this tournament because it is three games in three days. And they'd much rather he was playing three games in three days in the Sun Dome. Right. First weekend of March. Yeah, you got to think big picture. But he really does give you, I mean, you think against White River with their size, I mean, that matchup later in the year, oh, no January question. 18th, that's going to be different. Takeaway and the score, Keith Smith. It's a good basket for Franklin. Look at Clover Park getting it down court fast, drawing the foul. And there's Means to the line. Well, I say this every year, 50% greater chance of scoring a spread court situation or get an offensive rebound. So you might as well take the ball to the basket and try to see what you can get or pull up and make the little, you know, free throw line jump shot. You know, we'll take that all day if, if they're going to give it to us. But uh, so far, both teams, you know, taking the ball t very strongly to the basket. It's good to see Means making a free throw with that sore paw. Franklin goes to Eugene Artisan. Shot blocker, dominator in the middle at 6'8". Second free throw is good. Both those look good. In fact, the second shot looked better than the first better, one. Better, yeah. Now 1-3-1, one, one, half-court trap by uh, Clover Park. Tim McMillan. I, I, I've seen more, hey, I've seen more 1-3-1 half, one, one, half-court traps in this tournament, three out of the four games. And, and teams that, that are good at it. Yeah, you know, that's, <laughs> uh, that's uh, not used that much by a lot of teams. Franklin moving the ball, open shot, Artisan off the mark. Winston to the trailer. Uh, you always talk about finishing, that's one where you want to see Means pack yes. it. Although probably not with his right. Now at the other end, Mel Ninnis coaching up a storm on the Clover Park bench. Mel always animated, one of my favorite guys, and he's saying, how come, I'm, how come we don't get that call down there? <laughs> Here's Ball to the line. Misses the first. That was on Crisp, and that's Crisp's second. Stays yeah, in the to, game. He, oh boy. First quarter, I got to get him out. That's just me. But you know, the whole personality changes. Take him out. Well, who's looking to score? Well, they're all looking to score. Wow. <laughs> Who's going to be effective? Yeah. Well, he's not making that decision yet, although if he picks up the third, you know how that goes. Crisp attacks. A lot of balance, but gets the follow. See, right now, he, he he's, he's big enough. Nice pass over the top. Ball runs the floor really well. David Chris is big enough to, to get the shot off over a normal high school kid because he's so strong. Quick pop by Parker, doesn't go. Henning strong, second chance, ball gives it up, space in the baseline, and Mike Magnoa gets his first point. So Franklin's gone to the bench liberally early and gotten good results. Bagnoa, McMillan handling the ball. And Artisan. Uh, Franklin manning up tight. Franklin, well, doing a good job of keeping the ball out of the paint. Crisp, good entry, and a big hit from behind on Means. Long ball to the other end. Artisan can't finish. Go back the other way. And a rejection by Ball. Ball says, listen, rookie, if you're going to bring that stuff in here, it better be tough. <laughs> he sent that thing packing. 
right, right there. The freshman. Nice job. You know, he didn't even have to jump really to get well, to it. Well, what I was concerned about, <laughs> you look at that angle right there, him hitting his head on the on the bottom of the yeah. board. I used to worry about that a lot. But one of your players <laughs> sitting there. <laughs> I was wondering if you were going to pick up on that. Smith. Uh, Winston, he, he, Winston, he's got the same jump shot as his brother. Winston's got six and another traveling call. I'll, I'll tell Franklin you, at the other end. I'll tell you one thing. Even when you score, you better get back on defense because Franklin is coming and they're coming hard. And transition defense has got to be, you know, the one thing I would say personally, if I'm if I'm over there with Malice, say, look, we can send maybe two people to the offensive board, but we better have three people yeah. back, or we're going to be in trouble. And this has got to be the, the fastest team Clover Park will play all year. Oh, no question. You know, they played Probably Lakes, the most so athletic too. they lost to Lakes very early. But yeah. again, this was without first means. Game, first game of the year. Yeah. But Franklin is a, another level. Franklin Beach, I think, set the standard for speed and. And really, Prep, the way D.J. Fenner has started off this year, and you know, everybody thought uh, Prep would be a different team without Bruey, but they, they, if anything, they're faster. Yeah. Well, they're different. You know, they're just different. Yeah. Makes a difference. He's a load, Fenner. Yeah. Artisan. Artisan can't quite get the touch early on. Three-point game, minute and a half to go, first quarter from Franklin High School. The Quakers in the neon footsies. Playing Clover Park. Drive to the hoop. Nice finish by Jordan. The other freshman. For his first two. And a timeout called by Clover Park. Mel Linus takes a break. And Clover Park with a five-point lead and clearly not intimidated in this building. No. And it's good to see because we want to see a good game. You know, you, you kind of figure Franklin is tough to beat in their own house. However, they're not unbeatable. So, you know, as long as we have a good quality basketball game, which we're having right now. Franklin 7-0 and in the year, 6-0 and in the Metro. Play Beach here on February 1st, which should be a big night. Clover Park 4-3, and but 4-1 and in league games already. They're only lost to White River, who they figured would be the competition. They got a nice win over Sumner, which probably isn't as talented, but a pretty solid team. Yes. And their losses to Lakes and Foss, and both very good teams, and obviously at higher levels. Well, we saw Foss here. You know, Foss is pretty earlier. good. <laughs> yeah, and, and uh, uh, by the way, Trent went for 40 that game. Yeah, I wouldn't mind seeing Foss play uh, Franklin, and, which and could it, happen. And for my money right now, he's been the best player. You know, the, the kid for Canyon Springs is a good player, don't get me wrong, but I never saw him shoot the ball. He didn't shoot the ball outside at all. So I'm trying to say, where do you play him? Is he a point? Yeah. Is he a two? We hope you enjoyed all of our coverage, bringing you four quarterfinal games from the Tournament of Champions. It's our effort to bring you a great variety of high school basketball, and it was fun to see a Nevada team in Canyon Springs, clearly a contender there. And then, of course, Grant from Portland, which is going to be, a, I would say, guarantee Final Eight, maybe a Final Four team. Well, anytime you travel out of your own area, I mean, Canyon Springs clearly didn't start real well, but, you know, this is good. This is a good experience for them, too. Yeah. And then the other thing is, of course, playing the three. You get that tournament, state tournament field playing three games in three days. And, of course, it's earlier in the year. And, and in a tournament like this, and frankly, part of why we chose these four games is these, are, these will be the best games. People exactly. get tired. That's the right. championship game will be the least interesting game of the tournament. That's right. It's always like that. You well, know, the one thing Clover Park's got to do a better job right now, they've got to keep Franklin off the offensive glass. And, and they're getting a lot of second chance opportunities. Nice push by Grigsby for his first two. So Grigsby back in with two fouls. Crisp out of the game for the end of the quarter. He also has two. Final 40 seconds. Parker forces it deep. Still on the line. Oh, and a break there for Clover Park. I understand the concept of, of this style, you know, but I, I'm old-fashioned enough to know that I nothing really good happens when you dribble the ball that much. Usually the other four guys stand around and watch the guy with the ball. Baseline reverse for although, Winston. Although that was pretty good. That was okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, he didn't dribble it very far. Well, that was out of it was out of out of a play, out of out of a baseline, out of bounds too. But. Yeah. 
no room at all for Bag Bagona. I'll tell you what, Clover Park's doing a pretty darn good job of, of swarming the ball and doubling the ball, baseline, sideline, using, being smart with it. Five seconds left in the quarter. Parker in trouble. And the quarter comes to an end. Now the visitors from Lakewood. Off to a good start. Clover Park after one quarter leading the Franklin Quakers 18-16 in the Terms of Champions Holiday Classic on Xfinity. Second quarter set to go at Franklin High School. The host Quakers leading Clover, or trailing Clover Park, 18-16 quarterfinals of the Tournament of Champions Holiday Classic. Bob Akamian, Dave Harshman. Leading scores through one quarter. Philip Winston off to a good start for Clover Park with eight. Two fouls on David Crisp. He's, but he's back on the floor yeah. with six points. <clears throat> interesting, interesting move by, by Mel, hoping that, uh, that David can stay out of... Uh, foul trouble in terms of picking up his third. But how, I mean, honestly, you got to play your best guy. Well, I, yeah, I'm you so do. tired of this, the invisible rules of how long you sit, guys. You can't win if you don't play your best guy. That's true. And I know if he fouls out, he won't be on the floor, but you got to give your player credit. So he sat with the final. He didn't come out after the second foul. He sat the final two minutes, and he gets right back to work with his eighth point. Okay, like if he gets his third foul right now, does he have to sit the rest of the half? That's that's the rule. Well. Because I wouldn't leave him out that long. I think I'd take him out, and then I'd see. Maybe bring him back at three-minute mark. Don't wait too late because you, you don't have time to get back. Well, here's the thing. Here's the thing. If you – let's say you're Mel Ninnis. He gets his third foul. You take him out of the game. You put him back in with two minutes to, to go in the half, and he gets his fourth foul, and everybody goes, what the heck were you thinking about? Was you going to play seven minutes without him? You know, the one thing I, I, that I'm probably impressed in, you know, the, the nice play, but also obviously not the uh, execution they wanted, is the fact that they, you know, they sat him and, and they were ahead by two at the end of the first quarter. So, I mean, you know, they're, 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 they're doing what they want to do. Y you know something, I know, I know that Franklin is really athletic. But I wonder what would happen if Franklin went to a zone a little, or maybe a half-court trap, instead of playing man-to-man. -man. Because see, they're giving David, you know, when he can, if he gets an edge and he can get to the basket, they're causing lots of problems. Nice passing in tight quarters. Winston got that started and ball finished. Lagona had a touch along the way. Seven for ball. That was a great job right there by David Chris, but not draw the charge. Mike Hill. Stopped on a dime. Mike Hill gets his first two. And a little frustration foul there by Hill. And that's his second. Yeah. And, and, and what hurts is, is that, you know, they make him miss the shot, and then you got to go get the board. Let's go back to the other right most here. recent basket. Look at that. But it's a nice finish, but then he goes down the other end of the floor and can't garner the rebound, so he gets his second foul. And that's what hurts. Is it safe to say, first free throw misses for Jordan Allen just in the game, is it safe to say that neither team has been successful defensively yet? Well, I think they're doing some good things. I, I, I think the one thing, the way that the, the, the way Clover Park's playing on offense, I think you've got a, what I call funnel players. I mean, David is going to beat you to the basket. What you got to do is hopefully you got enough guys back there that maybe you draw a charge or maybe he doesn't find the open man and throws it out of bounds. Or if he kicks it out for the guy for a three, he misses a shot. The lead is three. I, I don't think that Clover Park is playing bad defense. I think what they're doing is they're giving up way too many second shots. And that's, that's part of the defense, mm -hmm. but that's the rebounding part of it. Here's a third chance for Franklin. Good work by Hennings getting on the floor. And keeps possession. You know, Hennings is so quick. I think if I, if I had a guy playing him, I would play what I call a step and a half. Force him or invite him to shoot the ball over your hand. Make him shoot the ball outside. Yeah, I think, I think that's one thing is 
I know players are better today. They're much more athletic. But you know what? How many of them are spend a lot of time shooting the basketball? Yeah. And that's that's something that you can't, you know, you can teach that. But see right there. I mean, Hennings is really quick, but he's also pretty small. So as you see, Chris go to the basket right then. Now Allen got back there. Nice second chance for Chris. You know what I'm saying? See, I mean, you know, he creates situations right then, but he's not going to be able to go to the, all the way to the basket because bigger people are going to knock the ball down on him. Ball's made a couple of nice passes to the interior, but Franklin doesn't get the good shot. See, now they made Henning shoot that ball right that time. Chris believes it. And off the glass means his first basket. Big play. Fast pace game. Already down to the five minute mark of the second quarter. Ball, the floater. Nice job by Ball to take, have some patience, take his time, get a good look. Well, he made two good passes. This time he kept it. He's got nine. All right, here's Crisp. He's got 10 right now, top scorer in the game. Double clutch. Make it a dozen. Well, they put a bigger player on him, about the same size, but more physical player on him, but that hasn't proved to be any better than the smaller, quicker guy. And a three-pointer. Well, I was wondering when Ball was going to look at the basket from the perimeter because he's got a nice stroke, and you know, he had a couple openings on the wing, and he didn't even look at the basket. But right then he did. Now we've seen his versatility early. 12 points. Hits a three now. But here again, this is what I call the long free throw. You can't let the guy... When a guy looks at the basket like that, takes a dribble into the ball, I never saw a defensive <laughs> player come at him. Somebody's got to come at him. He gave you time to do it. You know what I find interesting at times? Jason wasn't even in the huddle. You know, his assistant coach many times do that, and he's yeah. he's walking around, and he he's the head coach. Don't don't get me wrong. I'm not saying anything negative. It's just I think it's interesting some of the things that he does, the way he coaches. I think is is good because he allows other people to have some input, but also you know he has the final hammer, and they and every every kid in that program knows it. I remember a year ago we now were they at come out tournament. with a two three. See, yeah. Tough shot for Parker. That's his first two. The only problem with the 2 3 there is that nobody took the ball. Offensive glass. And that second chance. Martin Fry in for the first time. Set the lineups for you right now. It's Fry, Bagona, Ball in the game for Franklin, along with Keith Smith. Keith Smith's and a freshman, and he's a freshman. He looks like, I was going to say, I looked at his face and well, he. Oh, and a nice lob. And that was Crisp setting up Winston for the elevation sensation. That's uh, that's pretty good. Oh, well, now what? Oh, very simple. Boy, he almost missed that. <laughs> he, almost, was, he did. He almost <laughs> missed that shot. I was just oh. about to say get out of the way, but Parker preferred the understated finish. Eight-point lead for Clover Park. Means doing a nice job, I mean, you know, doing a better job of clogging the middle and making him take some tougher shots. Now, you know, he doesn't have to score a lot to be effective. He will get a lot of rebounds, though, if you don't block him out. Chris right in the middle of things, but no second chance. Little lean on Hennings, and we go the other way. Let's take another look at the aerial. Is this the play of the game? I think so. Well, right now it is. Yeah. I, that's what I meant, up to this point. Up to this point. I like Winston getting up in the air. Yeah. That's pretty good. Chris made him work for it. I'm going to throw it up here, and you have to get it. We'll try it again. Uh, Winston tries to return the favor. Well, they didn't get the backside man screen. No. Now, 
Clover Park very fortunate right then because they had a run out. Franklin did, but Artis Artisan couldn't handle the pass. And Mel Ninnis is not happy with Mike Hill, so he substituted him. And now Mike's going to get to sit next to the coaches. <laughs> words no player wants to hear. Sit by me. Chris with an arm in his face. Been kind of stuck on this score for a few possessions. Holy cow. Fry runs the gauntlet. How is this a two-shot foul? I don't know if we can see it because I, I know he got grabbed got grabbed, but did he travel before he got grabbed? Well, I had the ball up in the air. You can't you can't <laughs> not put intent. Of course you can. Well. <laughs> all right. I'm not gonna argue. <laughs> Just a it's a LeBron hip it's a less graceful LeBron hippity huff. Well, at that level, you can give it, but this is high school basketball. Both free throws good. So Fry's got four off the bench here in the second quarter. Lead is six, and the ball for Clover Park. Travis Parker brings it down. They'll set Chris out on the wing. Jordan back in. To the middle, deflected, picked up by Franklin. Ball behind the back, once on purpose, second time by accident. Maintains the possession. Now he'll launch the three off balance. Strong follow by Artisan, but doesn't have the angle. And then the loose ball picked up by Fry. Smith open, bang, that's three. I'll tell you, there are more young players that are not, they're not shy about shooting the basketball. Lead is down to three. He caught it. He was ready. Knocked it down. And you watch his leg. Good looking you know, shot. Good hop. Yep. And you think about kids who are, you know, 15. I mean, are 15-year-olds doing leg workouts yet? <laughs> or is that just God-given? Well, strength training, great job by Parker on the steal. Parker sets up Winston. He's got a dozen. Good balance for Clover Park. Crisp has 12. Winston has 12. And here come the Warriors again. 40 seconds on the half. Big man back in. Kicks it outside. Knocked down by Glenn Jordan. That's what I'm saying. See those, all those freshmen. Six different players have scored here in the second quarter. This might be a little scary to the world of two-way basketball. Defending state champ Linden Lions. We saw them last week. They're down in San Diego at the Surf and Slam Tournament. I wonder if it's uh, warmer down there than it is up here. I think so. I had to say it. I was thinking <laughs> it. It just came out. Fouls on Means, his first. No bonus yet. Three seconds left in the half, nor will there be. Hennings to the line where he's missed one. Well, despite all the shortcomings, Clover Park has had eight-point leads in this game. First free throw is good for Hennings. He's got three points. Second to come. Franklin has... Two guys back, and they're going to need it. 3.4. They're going to let Winston get to midcourt, launch the big three. No. Boy, that was a good look at that shot. Holy cow. Entertaining first half and a bit of a surprise as the two-way team from out of town having trouble on the home court of the host team. Halftime at Franklin High School, Seattle, Washington, quarterfinals of the Tournament of Champions. Holiday Classic. Clover Park 39, Franklin 33. More to come. The best high school sports action is on Xfinity.
Halftime at the Tournament of Champions Holiday Classic quarterfinals from Franklin High School in Seattle, Washington. Glover Park leading the host 39-33. Bob Akami and Dave Harshman with you. Let's take a look at some first half highlights and lots of them. Very entertaining game so far. And first we talk about Franklin. Keith Smith, the youngster. Freshman. A lot of freshmen with a lot of ability. Now Patrick Ball, you know about the senior. Yeah. A little bit of everything. Good hands. Great catch and finish. Kevin Grigsby in foul trouble early, but gets back in the game. Knocks down the J. Big three. And then here comes Clover Park. They may be young, but boy, they are quick. Crisp. Crisp. More crisp. 12 points for David Crisp. Three crisp plays. And Philip Winston. On the, on the inbounds, on the baseline inbounds play. Now you talk about off the dribble. He's been pretty good off dribble and yes. not too many dribbles. Yes, he has. And then he just throws that dagger from three. Having the play of the game so far. That's not bad. Up in the air for Winston, courtesy of David Crisp. And that is why Clover Park has the lead as we get ready for the second half. Clover Park shooting 52% from the field to 45% for Franklin. And the interesting story is, despite having eight offensive rebounds, Franklin's taken five fewer shots. And why is that? Turnovers, 11 for Franklin to just four for Clover Park. No question. Uh, Franklin's got to shore up their ball handling uh, and got to continue to pound the boards. Clover Park got to keep them off the boards and continue to take good shots. Uh, shot over 50%. So it's... Uh, Let's settle in for a big uh, second half. Now, one thing we noticed, Franklin staying in the man, really not effective in that man defense. They went to zone a little bit. Would you play more zone if you're Jason Kerr right now? I'd come out with the zone just to just to see what they just to see what Clover Park does, and then make an adjustment from there. You know, I, I don't think personally that you could stay in any one what I call gimmick defense, which the zone is. For, for too long, you know, whether it's a, a, a straight zone, a matchup zone, a box in one, a, a, a you know, triangle in two, whatever. And it's tough to do that against Clover Park because they got so many guys who could score and get to the basket. See the Clover Park Warriors coming out of the huddle around Mel Ninnis. 2011 State 2A champs, fourth place a year ago with a team they really thought was good enough to win it all. See, walking well, by, and look who's walking by courtside here. This is the Federal Way Eagles. What are they doing? That's a 4A team. Just come to see some good ball? That's right. Federal Way 4A in the house. Of course, Union's in this tournament. Good early look for Franklin. And Smith scores. He's got five. Scoring leaders, 12 for ball for Franklin. And then it was all fours and fives the rest of the way. Clover Park, as we mentioned, Crisp and Winston, a dozen apiece. Hennings face guarding Crisp. Good ball movement. Way to make the extra pass. It was a good look at it. Yeah, Jordan had a good shot. And again, Clover Park, a very deceptive four and three. Losses to... Larger schools, Lakes and Foss. This ball in and out. Heartbreak gets his own rebound and scores. Not the way Clover Park wanted the quarter to start. And to allow Franklin to convert an offensive rebound. Now they Offense, get the turnover. Now offensive foul, that's his third. Three fouls boy, on play Chris. One, one minute, and boy, that's tough. But you know, you know, that's, yeah, I, I know, but, you know, he's got his shoulder by him, basically. He didn't push off, really, so uh, that's a tough call. Crisp stays in the game for now. Melman is up, and I'm sure thinking about this. Okay, now, same thing. I wouldn't take him out right now. No, no, you got to let him play. Let him play to the four or something. Three-point try. Back iron heartbreak. Hennings cannot get the rebound, but it's out of bounds anyway to Franklin. Hughes have the ball on the attack. Grigsby. 
Ball on the perimeter. Grigsby now directing traffic. Free throw jumper doesn't fall, but there's ball, and they get him over the back. Yep. I'm watching uh, the movement in the zone with uh, Clover Park, and they're really not matching up, which I think is a mistake because you, you can't just stand around and check air. You've got to find a body and defend it. And uh, you're not stopping penetration right now, so they may have to make some adjustments. Crisp as Hennings up in the grill. Hennings is just daring him to push off. Winston. Baseline finds Crisp, who gets bopped and scores. First basket for the Warriors. Six points for Crisp in the second half. He's got 14. So it looks like now Franklin's trying to get Crisp to retaliate, get that fourth foul. He cut to the hoop and a big hit on is that his third? Ciali. And that is three on the big man, Mike Hill. Well, at least he didn't get him to the basket, didn't give up an open lane, and I like that. And you make the sophomore, Manny Ciali, shoot. And that's why, see the back spin on that, or actually the side spin. <laughs> so Hill comes out with his third foul at 532, and Means comes back. Both free throws no good. Now that we have a lane violation. Yes. Did you did you see who that was? Because I couldn't. I could not. Frankly, it looked like Means was out of bounds. Well, it means not because Ciali misses three free throws. And it's still a four-point game for Clover Park. And you know what Mel Ninnis is thinking about. He's leaving Crispin with three fouls, but you know that the Franklin surge is coming. And one for Winston. The so Clover Park needs to keep just grinding on these possessions. He is so much like his brothers. They, they, they just have a, a way about them. They can really attack the basket and finish. Yeah, it's because he's not the strongest guy. No, but, he just, but you know, he's resilient. You know, he's, he's steel cord strong. And completes the three-point play. Oh, and there's that seven-point lead. But the biggest has been eight. But I think this is what Clover Park needs to do right now. Win a few possessions, get some takeaways, and make Franklin's run when it happens more difficult. That's what happens when you try to throw the ball off the off the bounce. Three on two, and there's the finish. Parker, six points. Big basket. Nine-point game. Anytime you can get a turnover and, and score off it, that is a huge play. And Jason Kerr is never one to call the timeout to stop the big run. You know, Jason wants his kids to learn, you know. He basically is what he says, is I'm not going to bail him out. They needed that one. Three-pointer from Hennings. That's seven points total. Lead back to six. Crisp, difficult shot, second chance, Means. Great offensive work by Means. Now, if they get that out of him, they're going to be oh, fine. Oh, yeah. Hennings again. And there's the timeout. But we have a foul. We have nothing. We play on. I see Jason Kerr. These two coaches, a contrast. Jason does not stand much. Mel seldom sits. And right there is one of those leave your feet and then try to make a play. You can't do that. You know, I thought maybe, you know, he made good penetration. And that's one of those, there's an arbitrary line there that you don't cross. You pull up and you shoot the ball. 
and if they come up from the baseline to, to take, take you, then you drop it off. So right then, nobody came to take him. I would have just shot that little, you know, 12 to 15 footer. Artisan back in, adding a little size. McMillan in to handle the ball. Means knocks that one out of bounds. Artisan seems a little uh, timid at times. You know, I mean, he's not playing biggest guy on the floor in terms of height, but obviously slender build. A long 6'8". Moves fairly well. Yeah. Does not have a great, at least what we saw in the first half, does not have an outstanding touch. Big three. Look at Hennings here. Well, Hennings is kind of taking it upon himself, saying, hey, we're going to win this game. If, you know, I've got to do my part. Eight in the quarter, 12 in the game, leads down to three. Three-minute mark of the third. Jordan tries to do it by himself. That's right. Tough You're idea for the freshman. Yep. Ball and one. Ball and Hennings bringing his team back. Here we go. And it was Hennings with the pass. But all caused because of the freshman mistake on the other end. Now Jordan talking about dribbling. That was dribbling too much and really nothing to do with it. I don't know who he was looking at. I don't know if anybody was ready to receive the ball. 17 for ball. He's right at his average. And we're still in the third quarter. Crisp. Pulls up. Gets it. See, he, David is very good at that. You know, just when you think he can't go right, he does. All forces his way in there, gets to the line. Defensive transition. Clover Park has got, you should never get beat after you score. Okay. Great job right there, picking it up, knocking it down, but where's the defenders? Then get back and stop the ball. And I don't mean Patrick Ball, but you can stop him too. Now, they're trying. He's got 18, though. Three for four at the line. Now three for five. Quick release. Winston. Can't. Oh, they give him that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Great play. Well, he Holy got the God. ball up in the air fast enough. Yep. Right here. Great job by David Chris to get the ball out. Boom. There's the, you know, it's a continuation. You got to give him that. Winston 17. Two of three at the line. And you just heard Mel uh, tell him to get back and find the man. Lead is three. Franklin can tie it with a three. There it is. We're even with two minutes to go in the third. McMillan. Now a swat by Artisan. That's why you bring Artisan in the game. Well, yeah, but James did not go up strong. Number three. No. Now Franklin fighting for some momentum in a tie game. You don't leave the ball. Hennings with some room. Franklin will get set. Ball. Clobbered and will get to the line. That's Means. His second. Now Means doing what he needed to do there. Gonna make ball beat you at the line. He's got a couple misses though at the free throw stripe in this game. There's a third. No legs. Maybe a little tired. Yeah, when you play at a fast pace that they do, one thing uh, that I teach young kids is don't go to the free throw line. Go back behind, take a deep breath, get your, get your wind under you, make the official bring you up to the line. Substitutions, Dominic Broussard in for the first time, 6'3", senior. Well, Franklin was going to try playing with six guys, and the officials wouldn't let him. And Bogona came in, and Keith Smith said, oh, do I have to come out, coach? That's freshman stuff. Yep. 
Now Ball has 19, Franklin goes to the press. They lead by one. With 90 seconds left in the third quarter. Chris for three, bango. First three of the ball game. A quiet 19 for David Crisp. In foul trouble much, much of the way. Franklin loving the threes. McMillan. Well, the problem is, is that they're not rotating them being Clover Park. When the ball goes back, the wing's not coming out and taking the ball. That's why he's open for the shot. So they got to make an adjustment there. Wing, well, the wing should always take the ball until the guard can get there. So you have somebody on the ball. They're, they're not getting it. They're not doing that. Winston, a low percentage shot there. Go back to the watch other this, end. Watch this. The ball swung, and the guard, but he doesn't get there with a hand up. He just kind of trots there, but the wing could have got there sooner because he had nobody else on, his, on the inside. So poor communication by those two uh, for Clover Park that time. You've got to really attack the ball, and you've got to attack it with your hand up in the shooting pocket. Franklin leading the ball. Hennings misses. Huge, huge rebound by Means. Hennings fouls him. He plays a lot bigger than 6'3", I'll tell you that. And again, getting better and better. Coming back from his hand surgery, only his second game. And now Means is kind of mixing it up with Artisan away from the ball, a little bumping. <laughs> Offensive foul. Did a lot of control. Could have gone either way, I really think, because I think I thought the defender was moving. But, you know, I like the fact that you reward defense that gives their bodies up. Final 15 seconds of the third quarter. Up and under by Hennings, doesn't go. Last second chance, no, for Grigsby. And the third quarter comes to an end. Franklin has recaptured the lead after three. The host Quakers, 56, Clover Park, 55. It's a trophy dash to the finish at the Tournament of Champions on Xfinity. Pretty good fourth quarter of basketball coming up for you in Seattle. Bob Akami and Dave Harshman at the Tournament of Champions Holiday Classic. The host team, the Franklin Quakers, leading Clover Park now 56-55 after trailing by nine. Big 23-point third quarter, led by Patrick Ball. He had seven and eight points for Errol Hennings, who has 12 now, leading the way for Clover Park. Crisp with 19, picked up his third foul in the opening minute of the third quarter, but didn't get a rest for a while and, and did a good job not picking up number four. Now, three fouls going in the fourth quarter. You're fine. Uh, and, and, and you know, the interesting thing is David Chris has not shot a free throw. <laughs> of course, look where he starts the fourth quarter on the bench. But you know, Winston and Parker have been solid. Philip Winston has 17, been very good around the basket. And a timeout called by Clover Park, so Mel Ninnis saw something he didn't like with his team with the basketball. B-19 on a shot clock when we resume. Jason Kerr inside the Franklin huddle. Well, this is not the game we expected. We thought Franklin's pressure and ability to score and the you know, relative experience and depth would allow them to control the game. And uh, they have not been, really have not been able to control Clover Park. Well, and not that this has a whole lot of meaning, but you know, you look at Franklin as the number three ranked 3A team, and Clover Park's is number seven ranked 2A team. But you know, this really, that really doesn't mean a lot. And you got Chris back in the game now. So uh, yeah, they're playing at home and 
you, you can't do that. You know, you can't make unforced errors like that. But see, there's David. He's 25 feet away from the guy he's throwing the ball to. Shorten the distance, make a 15-foot pass. You'll complete it. Yeah, to say the ratings are subjective is an understatement. <laughs> Especially just you don't see. I mean, you know, the Greater Spokane League, they barely get out of it. Eastern Washington because there's league schedules so long. Right. So it's hard to make a judgment unless you make a road. We can go make a road trip. Huh? Watch prep and Lewis and Clark girls. And Tim McMillan uh, is a senior but off the bench. He is not shy. He knocked down those two threes in the third quarter and just came out and fired away again. Trying to leave the ball for Means. Some of the hang on here is Crisp. Nice. One thing about Parker, he does a pretty good job of penetration, then he leaves his feet and tries to make a tough pass, and that's usually gets you in trouble. Oh, he's got, gotten away with it a few times tonight. Right. Ball by himself, oh, and here's Means. Boy, and Means is mixing it up with everybody. Chris comes in hard. Mel Nennis is irate. He wants a foul, but David Chris has got to go make the basket, not just try to dunk the ball. And it looks like he landed on his uh, wrist. I, I, no, his stomach is hurting. His stomach. Look like, but I didn't. Uh, I watched the play. Let's see if we can see it here. Well, it looks like Artisan caught him in the midsection. I don't know how well, hard that was. I, I don't know, but it looked, you know, it's what I call a rim check, and that's why you always take two hands up to the basket with the ball. What do we call it? Is, it, is there, was there a technical? Obviously, it was a technical on the Clover Park bench. So, ball will shoot. That one finds all of the rim before it goes down. Ball has 20, so he's above his average. So let's see who this technical benefits. One point lead for Franklin. Let's see how Clover Park responds. Chris still kind of checking his stomach. That must have been harder than it looked on the replay because he came up and kind of bent over a little bit. Here comes the inbound pass right in front of us. What a big bun, and they get the offensive foul call. Hennings was trying to get Crisp well, his fourth. I think that's a little uh, turnabout is fair play by the officials. I, I'm not so sure he was there, but you know, he went flying, so they gave it to him because he gave his body up. You notice the pace has really slowed down. Yeah. Three for Crisp. Ball gets it right back. No, no, just pick back up. <laughs> 23 for Ball. Boy, and away from the ball, there is all kinds of activity going on. Now Ball's mixing it up with Means. Crisp is tangled with Hennings. Winston. <laughs> gets it back and scores. Almost turns it over, and now he has 19. Clover Park back up two, and timeout called, and more tangling up at midcourt. Frankly, here's what I think you, the, the, the officials need to do is to bring the two coaches together and say, hey, we don't want to have any problems. Let's just play the game, you know. Well... And they're trying not to just blow the whistle over and over. No, I understand now that. here's what's going on. And they're watching some of it. And they're talking. You know, they're both talking. Damn, Means is playing. For, for a guy with a hurt hand, he's playing pretty fearlessly. 
Yeah, no question. Going on here, and here's your discussion. I think the officials do have to make it, a, trying to figure out a little strategy here. And this game's been... But, but the thing is, uh, in my opinion, you need to talk to the coaches, too, and let the players know that, hey, we're not going to tolerate this, this, or this. You know, you got to clean it up right now. Just well, play good because, yeah. because you haven't blown the whistle. Now what? Now do you right. blow the whistle on every touch? That just disrupts the game. Exactly. And frust keeps frustrating people. And Mike Hill is talking about a guy who's been muscling it around. Mike Hill is now back in the game. 5.48 to go. A lot of basketball left. Grigsby. It's Parker. It's taken away. Grigsby gets it right back. Shots blocked on the floor. Ball is... Makes contact with several people. Here comes CP. Chris. And Ball meets him at the rim. Boy, and uh, Ball's got an argument because he might have been touched by four different people at the other end. Yeah. Nice job giving the ball up. Well, he got it pretty good yeah. there. You kind of had to call that one. But you're, you're, you're right. I'm... I'm surprised the whistle didn't blow down there. Frankly, though, the, my, from my perspective, I just don't want to see anybody get hurt for either team. Yeah. You know, I have no, I have no hand in wanting one team to win. I want to see a good basketball game. You know. Surprised that Clover Park is where they are? Yeah, because I had no idea. You know what they have, and, and still, I mean, I knew David was good, but Grigsby just picked up his third, fourth. Oh, it is. is right? Oh my! Unless they got it wrong up there, but well, and I think the Clover Park has sustained. You know, they've met the challenge. Franklin made the run, and Clover Park's back up four. Has got away from Means, but picked up by Hill. And it's a six-point lead with four minutes to go. And that's Hill's second basket, first basket of this half. Scored one, two, one basket in the second quarter, one in the fourth. So it's consistent. Take every other quarter he scores. That was on Grigsby. So that's his fourth foul now. So they, oh, okay. they were wrong last time. Because I only had him with two. But now he's got four. Ball slides the feet. The floor is a little slippery right there. Timeout called by Franklin. So Jason Kerr now trying to gather the troops. Five minutes to go. Six-point game, 66-60 in favor of Clover Park. Clover Park, three games here at the Tournament of Champions, and then big one with White River. That'll be in Lakewood on January 18th. Well, this has been a good day. Good day of basketball. Yeah, we hope you've enjoyed all of our coverage here on Xfinity. Of course, all four games available for viewing. Highschoolsports.xfinity.com. You need to be a Comcast or Xfinity subscriber, and with your sign-in, your Comcast email, you can watch high school sports action from all around the country, not just these games. And of course, these games are also available to Xfinity customers on Xfinity On Demand all winter long. We got more great action coming up for you. Get to see Eastside Catholic early in the year against Rainier Beach. We'll be at the MLK Tournament at the Showwear Center. Decatur Federal Way, that'll be fun. Mont Lake Terrace in action against Fairfax from California. And maybe the best girls game you'll see all year, Oregon City against Mount Rainier. All for you on Xfinity Sports. Chris, pan in the face, doesn't get an Artisan skies for that rebound. Yeah, still had a good look. Hennings, a little too strong, but he draws the foul. Well, now we're in the bonus both ways. 
See, I, I, it, it's hard to, it's easy for me to say, but it's hard to do. When Hennings has a ball out here at about 30 feet from the basket or 40 feet, what are, you can't challenge him because he's just going to do that. He's just going to go to the basket and draw a foul. So you got to get off him. Try to play containment. Second foul on Winston. Free throw good for Hennings. First of the fourth quarter, he has 13. Remember, Hennings was the guy who was the spark in the third quarter, hit those two threes. Yep. This is the second, but the ball's out of bounds. Wow, two Clover Park. Warriors lead by five, nearing the midway point of the fourth. Grisk turns the corner. Left-hander, no, tip in. Boy, two big plays now around the basket for Mike Hill. Well, one thing, though, is see David Crisp creates that because he goes hard to the basket under control, and there are people there to, to come and stop him. Leaves Hill open at the basket. Ball losing control. Right here. here it is. Here they come. Here's the help. Now Artisan's not there. Right. See, if, if you're going to go out and block a shot like that, Artisan's got to go more to it. Be, be aggressive. But then on the other end, see, they, they don't get back again, and now... Um, brother, I'm just blank. Ball has a chance to to knock down a couple. He misses the first, but Clover Park doesn't get back and stop the ball, and he just attacks the basket. That's what that's what Franklin's doing. He's attacking, 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 hoping they can either score or get fouled, yeah. go to the line. And Hennings has been good at this, as has Ball. Yep. 24 now for Patrick Ball. 68-62. Parker, deep. Parker with, Smith a, and foul. Parker with a really good move to the basket. Then he just kind of, you know, didn't get the ball up there. Just kind of. So now, they're in the double bonus, Franklin is. Went from eight fouls each, and they fouled twice in a row now. Now they put him in put Franklin in a double bonus. You can't do that. Keith Smith hits the first, his first free throw of the game. Has six points. Tell these guys are getting a little tired when they take this much time between free throws. Franklin's five of eight at the line in the fourth quarter. Four minutes to go. Parker has the ball deflected. And the foul afterwards. Good work by Smith. And probably a smart foul here because they had a breakout lane in the other end. And right now, Clover Park not hanging the pressure well at all. Is Smith pretty heady for a young guy. Yes, he is. Doesn't reach in, goes after the ball. Well, he sees 6'4". He plays over the top of these smaller guards. He's smart. Well, Smith again just went one of two. Makes that. Jordan coming back on for Clover Park. Give Parker a little rest here. Start thinking about now who you want on the floor in the final few minutes. I want guys that can handle it and can make free throws. Now, Clover Park hasn't shot a lot of free throws. No. Crisp and Winston are really the two. Boy, that's a tough uh -huh. shot. You see, that, that took, what, three seconds? And you don't make that thing, and that's... You know, this is what we call playing time and score. You're not you're not playing Franklin, you're playing time and score right now. You gotta know the situation. Are they gonna get means on that or is that the reach? And they much. what do they shot? Uh, is this is this the eighth eight seventh and eighth free throws in a row for them coming up for Franklin? Ten. Well they've shot ten, but two of those technical. Right, but these are the This will be the eighth, yeah, eighth. Seventh and eighth in a row. 
And every time that happens, the clock stops. 25 for so ball. So right now, Clover Park is their own worst enemy. That was on Jordan, his first. Well, they're rushing the ball down the floor, taking a bad shot, and then not getting back and defending. So the lead is two. So counting the technicals, they shot 12 free throws. Franklin has this quarter to two for uh, Crisp. Artisan of the board. Ball to the corner. McMillan, no. There's Hennings with his quick. I don't know where he comes from, but he always ends up at the rim. Well, they spread the floor, they push the ball down quick, but they're not, they're not <coughs> taking bad shots. They're getting, they're, they're actually getting a lot better shots than Clover Park has been. You here again, see Clover Park's going, it's the one-on-one -on -one thing right there. Means didn't receive that ball in a good spot. Ball though in a good position defensively. Ball the other end. Scores. Franklin takes the lead, 28 for Patrick Ball. And a timeout taken by Clover Park, 2.36 to go in a two-point game. Somebody's got to stop the ball. Nobody stops the ball. The other thing is, so what are they on a 10-0 uh, run? Was it 68-60? Yeah, 68-60. That's 10 straight. And all but those last two with the free throw line. Oh, no, I'm sorry, the Hennings basket as well. Yeah, and, and I'm looking at the fouls, and you have Hill for three and Chris for three, so it doesn't matter, you know, you've got to stop Might the ball. Well. Yeah, now Chris could have committed that foul. For that matter, Hill could have stepped in and put the body on. You know, I could look at it and say, boy, they're really getting some great calls, but it's not that, it's the fact that Franklin is attacking the basket and Clover Park's doing a poor job of protecting the basket and giving up lay-ins and free throws. And then coming down on their offensive end of the floor and taking quick shots. Two and a half minutes to play. Clover Park down two. I'm not sure if Franklin has led by more than two in this game. They might now. Millen makes the Ooh. save in the corner. Ball in trouble. Almost Franklin. had that steal. A little ragged right now. Oh, and an offensive foul. That, there's a freshman mistake right there. See, time and score, you don't need to take the ball to the basket when somebody's back there. Smith picks up his first. Here it is right here. I didn't see who stepped over. David Crisp took the charge. That could end up being a pivotal play. Yeah. There's just a little sweat to get off the floor now. Hennings comes right back in the game. So now Hennings and McMillan are in there, along with Ball. So Franklin is going quick. And quicker. And then Artisan. And yeah, get Smith in there and then Artisan. Artisan chatting it up with Means. That's been kind of fun to watch. It's been a good matchup. And Ball has been everything this half that he was uh, advertised. Long three, no. Means, Means strong. Means the board. See now, to me, that's more of a flagrant foul or an intentional because you do have the the. the Ball tied up, and then you, but then he goes past that and throws the, throws Means down. Oh yeah! Wow. Arrow possession to Franklin. So the arrow goes back to Clover Park now. And Means and Artisan continue to bump each other up and down the floor. Whistle, and they get a foul. They call it on Artisan. Yeah. Interesting. That's only his first. Well, I 
gives Means a little, what little Jason, mental edge. What Jason is saying is their guy bumped my guy and agitated him all the way down the floor, and they let it go, and then they call this on my yeah, guy down here. The retaliation. Yeah. You usually know, pay for that. He's right. That's why you will never see me in a striped shirt. <laughs> Crisp. Ooh, left hand off the glass. He's got 28. So Crisp and Ball each have 28 points in this game. Come to the other end. Hennings foul going to the hoop. Well, Clover they, Park clearly is saying, beat us of a line. We're not going to let you have these shots going to the basket. Now, that, they called it on David Crisp, but the other guy is the one who got him across the arm, but that's a big... It's four on Crisp. And I have to think, gee, maybe we're not going to be done in a minute 21. I may need to stay in the game longer. You know my theory. They don't pay these officials for overtime. <laughs> Nor us. That's right. <laughs> well, I wouldn't, didn't want to say that. I would just kind of kind of Our crew has been here through connect, four games today. Know, connect the dots. You've been here for four games yeah, today. Yeah, pretty good for an old guy. Hennings. Big second half for Hennings. 12 since the break. One point game. Oh, and a big swat by the freshman Smith. And then a foul at midcourt. On Jordan. And Jordan has made a couple of those freshman mistakes. He takes the bad shot right here. And then he fouls. And that's Hennings is smart. Dribbles the ball into him maybe a little but to draw the foul. Smart play. I like Hennings. what I've seen of Hennings. Uh, he's played much better. This is the free throw. them both. Artisan is there and he puts it in. Only the second basket for Artisan. Three point lead. Steal for McMillan. McMillan finds ball. Hello. Five point game. Timeout. Clover Park with 57 seconds left. Biggest lead of the night for Franklin. What happened on the steal? Because I was writing the score down. I look <laughs> up and you're going steal. <laughs> well, McMillan just stepped in. Did he? To the basketball. Let's take a look and see how far back we go on this. Well, Chris uh, kind of bobbles the ball. Bobbles the ball, yeah. exactly. But he's, why is he trying to dribble the ball in the middle where everybody else is there? And there's the ball. That was the second one, yeah. But the first one. Was it, a, it was a bad pass, I mean, and McMillan got it his hand in there. It was kind of just to him, yeah. That's, a hard, that's the hardest thing, you know, when you're getting pressure. It's, it's easy to say, and for me to sit over and say, well, they should have did this, should have done that. But the biggest thing is, is, is that you got to get open, you know, whether, whether you get open yourself or somebody screens for you, and then you got to come hard to the basketball. A lot of times, young kids don't understand, they run into the corners where you can get trapped. But go to the ball, get the ball, and then be strong with the ball. I like the fact that the the officials are are letting them decide the game. You know, and if it's a if it's a obvious foul, they're calling a foul. If it's a jump ball, they're calling a jump ball. If it's a turnover, it's a turnover. Both teams have a double bonus with 57 seconds left. Clover Park, though, has only shot two free throws in the fourth quarter. Franklin has shot 16. Winston, way off balance, almost went anyway. Fights for the board. Here's the problem. What they, they understand, don't understand. You cannot bring the ball down the floor from the top of the key because everybody's already back set up defensively. So even if you beat your guy, there's another line of defense. What you got to do is you've got to run something. Here is right here. Look at everybody's back. So he goes and spins, and there's the off defender there to help. If you're going to do that, then you've got to find somebody who's open. David David Crisp is trying to play. He's not even involved in the play. He's the guy who scored 28 or 30 or whatever he's got. you got to, you got to, you know, you, if you're going to ride that horse, you got to ride him all the way. Fourth foul on Winston. Smith to the line. 
He's got eight. This kid's going to be a player. Ice water. Well, I guess if the biggest lead of the game's at the end, that's a good thing. Crisp hit at the rim. But did you see, I mean, he attacked the basket, but there are three guys back there waiting for him. You know, drew the foul right here. And Ball two, says, you are not make, going to make this. Yeah, <laughs> you're going to have to earn it. Crisp, the only guy who's made a free throw in the fourth quarter. Or only guy who shot a free throw. That's right. Two for two, he's got 28. And that was a 10th foul, so in theory, uh, Clover Park is uh, shooting a dub double bonus just as Franklin is. 29 for Crisp. 40 seconds left, so this will get a, gets it back into a two possession game. Timeout, Clover Park. So free throws made. So we talked about Franklin defense tonight not being great in the half court. Clover Park has not pressured the ball very well. Well, I don't think you can. I, I think that, that Franklin has too many ball handlers and too much speed and quickness to do that because, like I said, if you challenge a ball out here and they get by your initial defender, now you've got problems because they get to the paint. And now they're smart enough, you know, especially Hennings because he's a senior. You come up to help, he's going to get the ball to the big guys, you know, whether it's a lob or a bounce pass or whatever. They're going to get a good look at it. If you don't come up and take him, he's going to go all the way or he's going to pull up and sit that little floater in the, in the lane. So, you know, pick your poison. It's, it's, it's not easy. And Hennings has done a good job just keeping the ball moving. Yeah. Hard to get any edge on him. Well, that, that, that one period where where Franklin went on a 10-0 run because it was, was partly due to the fact that Clover Park came down and just took some absolutely ridiculous shots and then went, that went back and fouled on the other end. Timeout. Called by Franklin. You know, these coaches like this, because they can really coach. <laughs> and this is like uh, being in a tournament game. Well, it is a tournament it game. It is. <laughs> tournament of champions. And they got to come back and play tomorrow <laughs> and then play again. Yeah. Well, you know, I guess the biggest thing is that if you lose this game, you know, you're not happy with your loss, you know, particularly the way that the events occurred at the end of the game. However, it's a great opportunity for your team, and they've got to recognize that. They've got to recognize, hey, you know, we've got to play the full 32 minutes. We can't play 30 minutes. We can't play 31 minutes. We can't play 31 minutes and 30 seconds. We've got to play the whole 32 minutes, you know, all the way out, make our free throws, take care of the basketball. It, based on what I've seen today, you know, Canyon Springs is a good team, but these teams are both better. I think they got, they, they're better overall. I think they have more people that can, can yeah. hurt you. And, and Clover Park showing some depth already. Yeah. I think that bodes well for a trip to Yakima. Now a foul called on the inbound. If that's crisp, he's done. No, it was on it no, Winston. Winston. Well, Winston's done. Winston has fouled out. 19 points, the final number. Fouls out with 40 seconds left. And free throws for Hennings now. Waiting for the substitute. Bring the freshman Jordan back. And 
standings to the line. He has 16 points. You know, he, before that, he missed his last two free throws. You know, he had two, he yes. missed both. But that was last time. 18 for the game, seven point lead, 40 seconds. So back to the three possession game, still time. Crisp will take it inside, leave it for Means, rejected by Artisan. Second chance, also deflected. Scrap on the floor. Artisan may have grown up tonight. Yeah. You know, this has been a tough physical ball game. He hasn't backed down. This will be the 21st free throw attempt in the fourth quarter for Franklin. His first. His first. You know, yeah, we saw him early, and, we, you know, you didn't like his offensive touch, but, boy, he has done some things, rebounding, using his body. He's got long arms, you know. If he could put on uh, 20, let's see. He put on 20 pounds, or at least at least 10 pounds well, of muscle. And you know he's pretty lean as it is. Yep, a big good weight. Got five, and it's 80 to 72. But strength is a great equalizing factor. It gives you so much confidence. Franklin only averaging 73 a game, so this is a nice number. Second one, no. Point lead at 23 seconds. Leaner for Parker, no. Crisp saves it inbounds. Means blocked again by Artisan. Knocked out into the backcourt. It's 13.5 seconds left, and Franklin has the ball. Hennings like he's done all night. So 30 for Ball and 20 for Hennings. And the final score will not be as close as Hill tips it in for his eighth point. And it's a done deal. Franklin wins their quarterfinal game at the Tournament of Champions Holiday Classic, 82-74 over Clover Park. But two pretty impressive teams that look like they can do some damage in the 4A and 2A tournaments. 82-74 the final for Dave Harshman. I'm Bob Akamian. Thanks for being with us. You've been watching the Franklin Tournament of Champions Holiday Classic on Xfinity, the home of the best in high school sports action. Good night from Seattle.